Hello to my new video. The topic today is the American Weimar Republic question mark. The video will have four parts. The first part, the Weimar Republic Germany. The second part, the USA Today. The third part, the USA Future. And the fourth part will be off topic, a word to John Bolton and CNN. Let's start with the first part, the Weimar Republic Germany. I will talk about history now, therefore I have some notes. But this should lead to one important point, and from this point we will jump to the USA. I will start with 1871, the founding of the German Empire. First with Wilhelm I and then Wilhelm II as emperor. It was a constitutional monarchy with a chancellor and the first one is the most famous one, Otto von Bismarck. And by the way, at this time, uh, German started with things like health care for all, public health care and things like that. Okay. The German Empire found its end in 1918 with the end of World War I. The situation in Germany after that was very chaotic, very complex, a lot of things happened. And I cannot talk about this. That's too complex. If you're interested in the German Empire, why World War Forced, the First World War started, and the situation in Germany after the end of World War I, um, I would recommend you, for example, Wikipedia. Very good articles there. The important point for me is that in November 1918, Philipp Scheidemann proclaimed the German Republic. The German Republic and the Weimar Republic is the same. But normally we in Germany and also in the literature, the term Weimar Republic is used, but it means the German Republic. And it was the first parliamentary democracy in Germany. So what do we have? An empire with an emperor, okay, a constitutional monarchy, then the First World War, a disaster for Germany, a very chaotic situation in Germany after that, but then all lead it to the first parliamentary democracy in Germany, the Weimar Republic. So that not sounds that bad, or? And in a way, it was not that bad. It was a real democracy with different parties, popular vote, with a parliament, discussions, coalitions, free elections. So far, everything sounds very good. But the Weimar Republic will end in 1933. The Third Reich, the Nazis, Adolf Hitler. But why? What happened? Again, a lot... <laughs> Obviously, books are written about this. And many books. So, the details are not important for me. For me, I will concentrate on one point, so you can talk about why the Weimar Republic failed. And then you can start first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and so on and so on. I will concentrate on one point. Important is, was there a putsch, a revolt, a revolution? What happened that after 1933, there was no longer a Weimar Republic? 
a parliamentary democracy, why there was a dictatorship, why there were concentration camps, gas chambers, World War II, and so on and so on. What happened? Hitler was a clever man, smart, he was no idiot. His goal was to destroy democracy, to become a dictator. And he was very clever because founded a party, the NSDAP, and you can, could elect him. At first not that many elected the NSDAP, but some, but later more. And that, in a free election, very important. The NSDAP, the NSDAP became the most powerful party. It was all legal. Adolf Hitler became, consequently, the Reich Chancellor. procedure, all okay, all legal. And then there was a very crucial moment. Again, a lot of details you would have talked now, but not here. It was the voting about the Enabling Act. Adolf Hitler asked to give him ultimate power. But he asked the parliament. So the parliament voted about to give Adolf Hitler ultimate power or not. Very few details. What happened before was the burning of the rice stocks, for example. Then, in, in this way, Hitler used this to uh, imprison all uh, communists in uh, a parliament, in the Reichstag. So, they were no longer there. Nevertheless, for the Enabling Act, he needed a two-third majority. And now we had the following situation. The communists were imprisoned. They were not allowed to vote then. The social democrats voted against the Enabling Act. Some smaller parties the for, for or in favor of Hitler. And now was a very, very big question. In which way the center party would vote, the conservatives. Though the far left was imprisoned, the left voted against. What would the conservatives do? To be fair, there were discussions inside the party what, how to behave. But in the end, the Center Party voted in favor of Adolf Hitler. And with the small parties and the Center Party, he had his two-third majority because the Social Democrats had not one-third of the votes. Now Adolf Hitler had ultimate power. Now he could do everything. 
Now it started. And to be fair, at the day of the voting, there were armed SS and SR troops in the Reichstag. So Hitler threatened the parliamentarians. Nevertheless, the Social Democrats voted against. Sure, you cannot say what would have happened if the Center Party, the Conservatives, also would have voted against the Enabling Act. Maybe then we would have seen the butcher so. But the point is that Adolf Hitler could say, you gave me this power. I asked for it. It was an, a vote. You voted for me. I needed a two-third majority in the parliament. You gave me, the parliamentarians gave me the two-third majority. They gave me this power. It was all legal, all democratic. It was a democratic process. All legal, up to this point. What happened later is another story. But up to this point, everything was legal. Everything was democratic. Hitler was smart. He was an idiot. So, Hitler destroyed the Weimar democracy with democratic means. Also, you can say, you can be anti-democratic by acting democratic. That's one of the problems of democracy, what's sometimes said, that if you have somebody and that's also an important point. Hitler wrote a book, Mein Kampf, My Fight. Everybody knew that he dreamed about to be a dictator. Everybody knew what he thought about troops. Everybody knew that his aim was to destroy democracy. Everybody knew this, and especially the parliamentarians who were asked to vote against or in favor to the Enabling Act. They knew this, for whom or against whom they voted. And by the way, the Social Democrats who voted against Hitler very fast they get this red triangle. New fucking president used not so long ago. And they were not became not treated very nicely in the concentration camps then. And maybe also it's not a topic but if you look at um, parties today in Germany, we have three big parties, or large parties. The Green Party is a new party, then still the Social Democrats are active, the ones who voted against Adolf Hitler, and they're proud of, and I think it's okay that they're proud of. But we no longer have a center party, so the center party not exists anymore, or Yes, the center party exists also, because we also have conservative politicians. But the center party thought, 
after World War II. Uh, I was maybe not that clever to vote for him and well, that's not good history. And what are you doing when you have a company and a scandal? You give your company a new name. And so they did it also. And today it's the CDU CSU. And the C stands for Christian, by the way. They are the former center parties who voted for the Enabling Act. And that's not unimportant for me that the left voted against Adolf Hitler and the conservatives voted for Adolf Hitler or in favor to Adolf Hitler and that the left got a red triangle then not the conservatives to be fair some of them also okay this was the history part and the first part, an important part is if you have somebody whose intention is to destroy democracy, then he can use democracy and the possibilities democracy gives him to destroy democracy. That's strange. It's like you can use free speech to speak against free speech. If you have no free speech, you cannot speak out that you wish to have free speech. But if you have free speech, you can speak out that you are against free speech. That's a bit surreal. That means if you live in a dictatorship and you want to talk about that you wish to live in a democracy, then you have a problem. Very easily you will be in jail then. But if you live in a democracy, and your dream is to destroy democracy, then you can speak out freely. Wow. That should one keep in mind. Okay. That was the first part. Give me a short break and then we'll start with the second part. Thank you so far. Welcome back. So, my question was, the American Weimar Republic question mark. Second part, USA Today. Can you compare the USA Today with the Weimar Republic? I think that would depend only on one question the answer to this one question. Can you compare the today's president, which name I never name, with Adolf Hitler? What would this mean to compare him? So let's ask, is he a real Democrat or is his intention to destroy democracy? Is he against concentration camps or for concentration camps? At least he likes to use red triangles, for example, and if we trust Mr. Bolden, he had no problem there with this China has concentration camps. His behavior? Is this a behavior of a Democrat? I don't think so. Or you could ask, is he a racist, for example? If you have to ask. So that's the point for me. 
to ask is this a man whose intention is at least to harm the American democracy or to destroy it? Does this man dream about to become a dictator? At least in a way like Putin? Or to establish a party system like in China? True like Xi or so? Or like a prince in Saudi Arabia? Because if you think that these are his dreams, his intention, that this is what he wants to do, then you have a very, very difficult and very dangerous situation in the United States of America today. Then you have a Weimar Republic in the United States of America. Because if he's no idiot, and again, Adolf Hitler was no idiot, then he can use the possibilities democracy gives him to destroy democracy. Especially if he finds a party who at least not oppose against him? Like the Center Party in Germany not opposed in the crucial moment against him, but voted in favor for him and gave him the ultimate power he needed? If he figures around him who remind you to Goebbels, Himmler and people like this, Bar. And I have the feeling, if you see it this way, if you think about it, then I see an American Weimar Republic, so no longer a question mark. And that's my problem I have with the USA today, that, well, in my youth, as many young Germans, you, you had this question, why all this could happen? Why? You, 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 you could not imagine that the people elected the NSDAP, Hitler. Again, he wrote a book, he held speeches. He had no problem to say the truth. Not all the time very clear, but you know, uh, you knew that he was an anti semitist and so on and so on. A racist, whatever. Nevertheless, they elected him. The Center Party voted for the Enabling Act. It was obvious what would happen then. So not all details, obviously, and things like that. But it, it was obvious that he would use this power to destroy the Weimar Republic. That this would lead into a dictatorship. But he voted in favor for it. Why? But today, with Poland, Hungary, Brussels, and the United States of America, you more and more get an answer to this question. But it's very sad to see it.
I don't know what is precedent should do more, say more. That you realize that his aim for a second term would be to destroy the American democracy finally. And should this president get a second term, then behind the American Weimar Republic would be an exclamation mark, a very big exclamation mark. Let's go into part three, so I mix it now. In Germany, many laughed about Hitler at the beginning. Hitler was a small man, and so Otto von Bismarck, the first chancellor, all the other chancellors, I think one exception, though, were from the gentry. Hitler was an ordinary little man. They laughed about him because he uh, was no. So he fought in First World uh, World War uh, One, but he was an ordinary soldier, no general or admiral or something like that. They laughed about this man. There was. A very saying, I think von Paben said it, I not looked about it, von Paben I think said it, that it will be no problem to that Adolf Hitler would become a Reich Chancellor because I, I think the, the, the quote goes in a way that within two or three months we will press him into the corner and he will he will uh, quick like swine something like that so it was very arrogant that's that's my point very arrogant they thought ah this hitler he's an idiot let him he has a big mouth he talks about ah what he will do all things so But even with this arrogance, again, it's, it's unbelievable that the conservatives voted for the Enabling Act in favor for it. The point is that, as I saw Hillary Clinton and him together in, in the TV debates, for example, I all, all the time had this feeling, Hillary Clinton, take this man serious. This man is no idiot. Don't act in this arrogance. So very often in a situation, he, he said something and he lied sometimes. And Hillary then said, oh no, that's not true. I give you the facts. These are the numbers. This is this, this is this, this is this, this is this, this is this. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And I thought, do you not think that you impress him at the moment? You're so boring. You're so arrogant. And also, still today, I have the feeling that in the United States of America, many take him not that serious. And you, you get more and more the feeling that Without any doubts, he will get no second term. Joe Biden will win the war. Um, will win the war, yes. Will win the election. Really? In a way like Hillary or in 2016. And all this reminds me in 
a very <sighs> sad way to Weimar Republic. Because again, if this man gets a second term, then you will have an American Weimar Republic. Even if Joe Biden will win, the situation will be very, very, very difficult. And also there I have the feeling that artists talking about police reforms and things like that, that's nice. But if you have a structural problem, you have to talk about the structure. And you have a lot of structural problems in the United States of America, obviously. It starts with health care, with social security, with worker rights, the right to vote. Sorry, I get an invitation in Germany. Every time, if I can vote, so I live in Bad Friesal, I cannot vote for the mayor in Heilbronn, for example, so I get no invitation to this election, obviously. But if the mayor of Bad Friesal sends the vote, then I get an invitation. A card who tells me, ah, you, that's your polling station, and then, and so on, so. and on the back side, I can apply for uh, voting by mail, by the way. So I can fill it out, send it back, then I get my, um, then I can vote by mail. It's all very easy in Germany. And the polling station is never far away. So we have a lot of polling stations in Germany. I can walk to my polling station. It's five minutes from here to walk. And also in big cities, you have a lot of polling stations. And you get invitations. The only thing what you have to uh, bring is the invitation and your passport. So you can show I'm this person. And then you vote. It's five minutes. But back to this. Trying to parse three. The USA future. I only see two possibilities. So a second term, then I don't know what will happen. Joe Biden as the next POTUS, he will have a lot of problems. Sorry, I not see him as a strong president. I cannot see him as a strong president. And I not see that discussion started. So I'm a German. Hey. We had not committed a holocaust, we have committed the holocaust. But maybe this gives me much more the right to say, hey, and what happens with the Native Americans? What was this? I would call it a genocide. But maybe you should start to talk about this in the United States of America. To talk about slavery. A nice police reform? Wow, cool. Very cool.
how about to give your police officers an apprentice ship two years three years another short training how to shoot that's cool so at a moment after feeling a lot would be possible and that's also I think so if you read an article about the Weimar Republic and especially also about Germany after World War II, uh, World War the first World War sorry then you will see that a lot of things happened and it, it was very unclear what the future would be because there were moments when um, communists started and try that Germany would become a second Russia they dreamt about the revolution the communist revolution there were forces who tried that the emperor would come back and we would have a monarchy again and everything would fine then and things like that so there were so many different forces and developments and incidents that nobody could really say what will be the outcome and still today there are a lot of discussions why the Weimar Republic failed there's so many reasons but I think what you can learn from the Weimar Republic is that in the moment you have somebody who tries to undermine to destroy democracy then democracy is in big 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 danger like in Poland Poland Hungary Brazil Russia And if then something happened, like the conservatives voted in favor of Adolf Hitler, voted for the Enabling Act to give somebody whose aim, and again everybody knew it, to destroy this republic. Then it's too late. Then it's happened. And gosh, I see some parallels in the United States today. Or today, and Mitch McConnell or so. Okay. I've named this videos being here's harder. It's a bit what I mean the feeling I have at the moment. Of course, yeah. I would like it to be in the United States at the moment, but it's not that possible at the moment. And nevertheless, I will not vote in November, obviously. So, yeah, obviously a lot will depend on what will happen in November. On the other hand, <laughs> I, I thought what came into mind is at the moment, what will happen next year? Say, um, 
Joe Biden would win. And the people on the street would achieve some goals. Developments would happen. What would happen with the GOP? Would they do it like the Center Party? Name themselves then CDU, CSU, and again the C is for Christian. So would the GOP then think, oh, let's give us a new name because uh, maybe it was not that nice how much we licked the president boots. We will see. Short break and then the final fourth part about Trump over and Siena. Thank you so far. Okay, last part. John Bolin and CNN. I should start with, I'm sitting here in Germany. Um, main sources for me to get informed about the United States are CNN International, uh, Los Angeles Times, somebody other new, sometimes other newspapers, Information on the internet, uh, YouTube, Daily Show, Turnova, other comedians. Whereby I said in the first time, sometimes I have the feeling if you need a good political analysis about things happened in the United States, it's better not to watch the news or read newspaper articles, it's better to listen to a comedian, especially Turnova strange situation in the United States of America there again. Okay, and there's only a background a little bit that CNN is for me uh, nevertheless an important source to get information about the United States of America because I can uh, receive uh, CNN International TV, other news stations uh, I need uh, the internet or YouTube or something. <clears throat> American internet, uh, American news stations, obviously. Okay, John Bolton and Sinan. There was this Sinan interview with John Bolton. Okay, he wrote a book, yes. He criticized the president, okay. Maybe he gave you some insights, okay. But I could not believe it as a sort of interview. That was John Bolton. And I made an interview with him like with any other person. A serious interview. Very serious questions. Oh, and John Bolton answered in a very serious way. But sorry, John Bolton? Wasn't he the one who would like to bomb the iron and things like that? Was he not one of this person where you sometimes had a feeling or the question, is the president worse or is Trump Bolton worse? And sometimes I have no problem to use very offensive language. In Germany we are allowed to use uh, offensive language, not only peep, peep, peep. So I would like to ask is John Bolton the biggest swine or the president? Nevertheless, they are both swines. Disgusting swines. And I had some problems with this interview. To give John Bolden, this John Bolden, a platform, a possibility 
to act like a serious political analyzer. Sorry, John Bolton? I never ever would interview this man. You can read his book. But I think you should be a little bit careful. So, to be honest, I not watched the whole interview. Because I got sick of it. And I waited for a moment and thought, what about a question like, you're still interested to bomb the iron? But I not heard some a question, such a question. I'm not sure if this is the way you should handle such things. Again, to talk about the book, about what's in it, okay, okay, but to present this disgusting swine, this trombone, who very, very much fits perfectly to your president as a serious person for an interview. Gavith, I have my problems. It's like for me, Mitt Romney. Mitt Romney discarded his religious feelings and he had to vote for the impeachment. What a wonderful Mitt Romney. I can remind the words from Mitt Romney. I'm not interested in the poor people. So he's not interested, so he's very religious and oh. But he's not interested in the black Americans, and the Latinos, and the Asians. He's only interested in the billionaires who donate him, who give him money. But suddenly Mitt Romney is, oh, he's so fantastic, man. He votes for the impeachment. He's so fantastic. I would ask him, uh, Mr. Romney, you are now interested in the poor? You are now interested in the people on the streets? You are now interested that all the time we have the situation white police officers, black man, the black man is dead at the end, often with bullets in his back. You are interested in this now? Or you know... I still have my problems with Mitt Romney. Now it's that he voted for the impeachment. Maybe it was only because he thought that maybe next year... Hmm? No. It could be Mitt Romney. Running for president, see in 2024, maybe? I don't believe this man, sorry. I not forget his words. And so I cannot forget the words from Trump Bolton. And if Trump Bolton would sit on the other side of this table, I would have to tell him that I think that he's a disgraceful swine. And
and his book. I see a lot of tactic in it. Because you're not telling me that he now has changed totally. And it's not only with Mitt Romney or John Bolton. More and more I see developments that, let's let put it that way around. What you often can see at the right wing is that you have this male figures with this macho attitudes who always uh, try to be the number one. And it's very interesting when two of them clashes. And what I see is that the president and John Bowden clashed. For a time, they thought, wow, working together would be cool. But now they clashed. And now they fight against each other. But that not changes the opinions of the president and not the opinions of Borden. But on the contrary, maybe. That's like when two criminals sit on a table and come to an agreement. And later may they fight. to become the number one in a city or something like that. They are still criminals. They were criminals before, they were criminals in between, they are criminals now, they are criminals. If they agree or fight against each other, they are criminals. And John Bolton is a radical right-wing fucking man. Whether he fights against the president or not. Now you can say, yeah, but I can use Mr. Bolton maybe. Whoa, that was also very, very dangerous all the time. Some thought in the Weimar Republic, yeah, we can use this stupid little Mr. Hitler for our purposes. And in the end... This little stupid man smiled and millions died. So I'm very, very upset about the CNN interview. Talking about Bolton, yes, but please see him critical. But not in this way. As I said, I not saw the whole interview, to be fair. But what I saw was unbelievable. And I saw a longer part, I have to say. Or more, well, three, four parts or so. Okay. So that's for today. And, yeah. Should I come back to the beginning? The American Weimar Republic question mark? We'll see what will happen in November, but nevertheless, all developments at the moment in the United States not look that good. I yeah, you only have to talk about the virus. I'm not sure what will happen in the next month in the United States of America. And it feels strange because in Germany 
we open up now more and more, not everything functions, but at the end only a few infections, some hot spots, meat plants, <laughs> like in USA, it's interesting. Also the biggest outbreaks, one with 1,100 infected workers, also in Germany. That's what I say. Germany is not so different sometimes to the United States of America. Again, and now again, 400 workers at another meat plant. We have all, often all the same structures, developments, problems in the United States of America and Germany also. But because the overall situation is totally relaxed in Germany now, we can handle it. It's one large outbreak, we can handle it. And, maybe also different, we have now, again, a very, very hard discussion about what happens in these meat plants. Because also in these meat plants, also so, so similar to the United States of America, no Germans work there, East European workers work there. Or workers from East European countries, Romania especially. Okay, but nevertheless, it's more and more it relaxes and it nearly feels relatively normal in Germany. And we start to open up borders. I can think about maybe it's possible. Um, to have a vacation in Portugal again this year. Um, if not, then more because of uh, my work I have at the moment, but maybe at the beginning of next year or so. But you can travel again. And also Portugal masters uh, the situation very, very good, so it would be cool to be in Portugal. And this development is so differently, so different to what happens in the United States of America. And to see that, yeah, it's like you, you, you drive with a car and you know the road will end there, but you're not step on the brakes and instead you accelerate <laughs> and yeah, the road ends, but that's not important. Well, let's drive. And it's hard to see this. It's difficult to see how many people die in the United States of America. Have to die. Who not had to die. And that's crazy. It's really crazy. Yes. And therefore, um, yeah. I don't know. Um, so my plan was to be in the United States of America again in February 2021. And I thought no, let's see. Who will be president then? Ah, oh, that would be nice to be there, or not so nice to be there, or the people would be happy or not that happy. But at the moment, the problem is, I even don't know if it would be possible to be in the United States in 2021 again, in February. And that's a strange feeling. I mean, a lot of months till then. But at the moment I have the feeling that whoever will be president or whatever will happen, or there's so many difficult developments at the moment that I fear that 
I will not stay in the United States again in February 2021, even if I would wish so. Okay, that's the video for today. Not very happy and not very nice. Let's see. It would be, yeah. I've, I've talked in the last video about that Germany have changed so much. So, Germany today compared with the Reich, Weimar Republic, the Kaiser Reich. The problem only is that always the in between what leads to the situation today in Germany was not very nice. And I could imagine that uh, the United States of America maybe will find a way to handle things different and to establish at least some standards and um, but um, very often in many countries the way there to was a very hard way. Let it end here. And as always, thank you for listening. Thanks. Thank you.